All right, guys, we're going to continue to talk about the mark of the beast. Hopefully, you watched a previous video where we talked about the karagma, which means to etch, to chisel, okay? And we're going to take it a little further where we're going to look at, in this video, the tessera. A tessera is a tile. So what we have to do is we have to go back to the ancient language, the ancient Greek language. We have to go back to the ancient times and the way they did things that the Apostle John would have been experiencing at his time so that we can understand the words he's using, understand the language of the way they did things to understand how that equates to something we would see fulfilled in the prophecy in our day, which we can see exactly. So in the ancient times, we've went over in the previous video how the chiseling is the mark of the beast. You would etch something. You would etch the, the mark. You would etch the name and the number of his name. Okay, that's the previous video. Hope you watch that. Now, in this one, we're going to talk about the tessera, the tile. Now, we're going to talk about the pisos. The pisos is the, the stone. Okay, now, as we understood before, the ancients, what they would do is they would have like an identification identification card like a tile like you see here or they would have something called a seal impression a seal impression like this would be an example of something you would take the the uh, name of the person and you would etch that in clay okay you would etch that in clay and that would be the name of the person the ownership and that is the actual word for uh, as well karagma okay so it could be on a tile or it could be on clay, okay? And these are very uh, significant things for us to understand, to understand the prophecy. What is exactly the mark of the beast? What uh, is John describing something he could see in his, his day? Yes, we could see the karagma as a tessera. It's a tile. So you would etch something on a tile, identification. And it could be a seal. So this is the language that they would have used at that time. And in the clay, you would also uh, have a piece of clay, but then you would have something to where you would, um, you know, have the, the opposite. Okay, opposite of the letters, then you impress that onto the clay, and there would be a name. So all of this language of what the ancients is using is going into the description of the mark of the beast. Now, most people will teach you about, okay, what is the mark of the beast? Now, you cannot understand the mark of the beast in itself, okay? Everything we must understand by understanding the light versus the darkness. There's always two, guys, all right? So, um, the seal of God also must be understood, okay? So, we're going to display all this. We're going to work through um, these ideas and concepts but i can't emphasize enough some of this if it goes over your head and you say you know leland what are you talking about we've discussed all of this in previous videos we're just going to now emphasize the tessera as you can see in the description of the video the tessera so what is a tessera it is a tile okay so when we look at both the seal of god and we look at the mark of the beast we again find Similar Greek words. So, for example, when Christ says to the church, I can't remember which one, but he says, to he who overcomes, I will give a white stone. And on the stone, a new name written. Now, the um, normal Greek word for a stone is a lithos, okay, a stone. However, there, it's, it's a different word that is a voting stone, okay? So, for example, in the ancients, if you were to vote and you were to decide a matter, either yes or no, you would take your vote and you would put it in an urn. That's the word that the Apostle John is using for the white stone. It's not just a stone, it's a voting stone. So, what does this mean? It means that Christ will vote for the overcomer. Their name will be on the stone, okay? The name will be on the stone and he will grant to them a white stone, voting for that person, giving them the you know, authorization, okay, of, 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 
a positive, okay? Now, if they, what they would do is if they voted against, okay, they would have a black stone, and that would mean no. So, why is this important? It's important because this is the word for count the number of the beast. I will show you um, the actual word. I'm not going to pronounce it or anything now, but it's a similar word. So when it says count the number, it's counting the number of people that have the black stone that, okay, the beast has counted. Okay, just like voting, just like Christ gives the white stone, okay, the beast gives another stone. Now, when Christ gives the white stone, he says, you'll have a new name. So, so the freedom in, in Christ Jesus is freedom for the individual, all right? But the beast is not so, okay? Everybody is not, you don't have freedom. You're just, um, you're just the same number, the same name, okay? So the beast puts his name in his number on all of those that take the mark of the beast. That is, that is what it's talking about. So let's think about it like this. We're going to, well, let's say you have an ID, okay? You have, a, you have your driver's license, okay? On your driver's license, you have what? Your name, okay? And any type of ID, car, driver's license, what else? What else do you have? You have a number, okay? So that is a similar concept to what is happening here, is that um, those are being identified as to whose kingdom they're a part of. Are they part of the kingdom of darkness or are they part of the kingdom of light? Now, all these concepts are very, very important for us because the more understanding you have, the more ability you'll have to identify what is going on in the world, in the mark of the beast, okay? Because most people think, okay, there's a mark of the beast that's on your right hand, your forehead, and you can't buy or sell. Yes, it says that. But what does that mean? Okay, like, okay, what, what, how, you know, what, what does that mean? You know, does it mean that you, you know, you have to go and you have to have a, a credit card in your hand and it's your right hand and it's your forehead and you need this to buy or sell? Yeah, it could be that. Okay, but in order for us to really pinpoint this, you can see how if we look at the voting and you look at what Christ said, to he who comes, I'll give a white stone. Okay, and we can see the black stone in Revelation uh, 13, 18. Count those that have the number of the beast and the number of his name, okay? But the, another thing that we can see is that when we look at the charagma, when you look at the chiseling, okay? So what they would do is they would chisel the name of the person and a number. The name and the number to identify them. Okay, so they didn't have an ID card or something like that, but their, their, the idea was that the charagma is the etching, and you etch and you hold it, you have a tile which identifies you. Okay, so it's the ancient way the ancients used to have an ID card. Okay, and so you would need this, this would be necessary because of the myriad of taxes and systems that was in the Roman Empire. Not only that, the welfare system and the giving of money and wheat was all very, very organized, very, very specific, okay? So you would have to have this ID card to be in that system, okay? Now, how would this relate to today? Well, we can see that in, in a, any type of um, ID card, you'll have this chip on it, right? Okay, so in the ancients, what they would do is the charagma, the etching, would happen on a tile. Now, what's interesting is nearly all ID cards, all credit cards, all SIM cards, they all look the same. Okay, so if I take a SIM card and I show you the SIM card, you can see that that is exactly the same as that's on, you know, an ID card. So on your, you know, your credit cards or, you know, whatever. So that is there. So that's an entire system that's already in place. It's already in place. It's already there. All it needs is to be turned on or for some type of reason. And that's now what we can see. So, yes, the mark of the beast is here. It is this whole system that we must overcome. And it will include all these details, all these facets 
okay, for us to um, understand how can this work, how can this, this happen, okay? So we have the system in place now, which we know is the impetus for the mark of the beast. That is the pharmakia. Pharmakia in the Greek means sorcery, okay? So when um, in Daniel chapter 2, verse 43, 44, it talks about that the, they will mingle themselves with the seed of men, okay? So the feet are iron mixed with clay, okay? So what are they doing? They're mingling cells with seed of men. It gives us the idea and the concept of the Nephilim. The Nephilim were angels combining with mankind producing a different type of entity, okay? Now, remember in our seal impression, what is the seal? The seal is clay, okay? So it says, they will mingle themselves with the seed of men. They will combine the iron with the clay, but they won't mix. So what does this mean? It means that we are the clay. The clay is impressed with a name, okay? This is what the system is going to do. It's going to impress not on just physically the body, but on the soul. It will impress the name of the beast. That's what all this is, okay? And they are clay, or uh, the clay, mankind. When God made Adam and Eve, he made them from the dust of the earth, and he breathed the life, okay? So what are they? We are clay, okay? So that's what you can see what's happening in Daniel. And what it says is the iron mixes with the clay. Now, those are two different components that don't have the same DNA, if you were, okay? They don't have the same molecular structure so as to um, be the same, be one cohesive thing that doesn't break apart. No, it's going to break apart. It's not going to happen. Why? Because it's not God's original design as he created us, okay? So that's what the mark of the beast does. It will change the people, okay? They will be like Nephilim, okay? They will be like the days of Noah, that's what all this is, okay? So within the words of the mark of the beast, okay, there is this word charagma. And charagma is what we just showed you. It's a seal impression, okay, that would be a way of identifying, okay? So you'd have one side, which is written the opposite letters. You will impress the clay. So that is the word of the mark of the beast, charagma. It's a seal impression, Okay, now not only that, you would have a tile. Okay, a tile would be like an ID card like we showed you, and on it, you would have your name and your number. So, for the B system, okay, there's no freedom. It's a system because people are not worshiping God. They're, they're, they're um, not serving God. They're worshiping the beast. And how you know you're worshiping the beast? It's by money. Okay, so when you're in the system, the system controls the marketplace. The system controls your ability to buy or sell, all right? So it'll be very soon where videos like this, guys, you need to download these videos. You need to get the notes. You need to get the content of what we're sharing because pretty soon things like this will be completely eliminated. Now, we're just describing what the Bible says using the words, okay? We cannot speak plainly on what's really going on because these videos would be removed, all right? So in this playlist, I strongly, strongly encourage you to download these videos in the Mark of the Beast playlist so that you get the notes, you get the concepts of all this because a lot of this, you watch the video, understand, but then if I ask you the same thing three days later, you'll be like, how does that go? So anyway, we have an excellent article, which I really encourage you to save. And in it, it talks about the tile. Okay, so if some of this is unclear, we're going to really make this clear. This website, preparingyou.com and Karagma. And this is excellent. We're not going to read the whole thing, but we can see clearly the word Karagma, okay, Karag, Karagma, is a Greek word found in Latin text of the time of Christ. Okay, so the Greek concordance li listed as, as such and this comes from charax, which means to sharpen to a point. We talked about this in the previous video, which means mark. It's a stamp, imprinted mark, a mark stamped on the forehead and right hand and the badge of the followers of Antichrist. And it's a thing carved, a sculpture. 
So here they're going to get into what this, this actually is. This is excellent. To engrave anything in clay, okay, so that's like the seal impression, like we said, and it's a clay. And the Romans could use call objects with name identifying marks as caragma or caragmite. Even a tessera, meaning tile, were tokens that could be engraved in clay or lead or even bronze or stone. And there were many examples throughout the history of such of identities to identify individuals. All right, so these are ID cards. And of course, what captures your attention here is you can see that they have a, a ID card, a plate, and they have a hand. Okay, so this is the language the Apostle John is using in the book of Revelation, that there was a mark on their hand, a mark, a karagma. Okay, so they would have known at that time that this was an ID card. Okay, and these tokens became evidence of your, the entitlements in the world of Rome, in the ancient times of the fathers and elders, okay? And it would identify the people, you know, in the household. And it's called a tessera, which means tile. These um, were heredity and the responsibilities. The tessera hospitalis were tokens of mutual hospitality spoken under, and the token was probably in many cases of earthenware, having the head of Jupiter. All right, so not only that, you have you have the the system, okay? They had the token and the sign and the seal. So think of this as like a brand mark, okay? As a brand mark of of Jupiter, of the system, of the beast system. So you have a a, a brand mark of the beast system, and you have the individual's name, okay? And when the state became uh, uh, conscripted by the election, the same systems were used to provide government's welfare. Okay, so these are how the societies operated through the elaborate systems of taxation, which required individuals to be members or citizens. So this is how the world will be members and citizens to the beast. But we are not members or citizens to the beast of this world system. We're citizens of heaven. They were often made of clay with etched information on them before they were fired. In Judea, Gabbai, or tax collector, collected um, ground income poll taxes while he collected imports and exports. Okay, all this was kept track of. They invented taxes that reach into the life of every person. They were taxes based on number of axles, wheels, animals, pedestrians, use of roads, highways, administration to markets, carriers, bridges, ships, quays, on crossing rivers or dams, on licenses, in short, every variety of objects that were in research in the modern scholars. Does this sound familiar? <laughs> Guys, if this isn't clear to you that this is the world we live in, okay? So here's a bronze example. This is a bronze example. We'll, we'll show you these in a, a little bit later of what was inscribed with the, the individual's name, okay? Now, there are other ones that were seal impressions like this one. Um, identification token of a cavalry commander. So this is a person. This is their seal impression. Okay, and so that's this whole system of taxation, right? So what... This is how this whole thing is going to work. Both Greeks and Romans uh, used small framed boards filled with wax or clay, and a thin coating of wax was used for brief and short-term notations. Okay, scratching letters in the soft wax with a stylus. Okay, so this is what the word mark of the beast means. Scratching letters, okay? And that's how it can be a scratching, a pen. Okay, like I'm showing you this little uh, sword. Scratching letters. It also can hold a payload. And that's what the pharmacia is. The pharmacia is a sword. It is something that pierces the skin. And it puts something in your body to change your DNA. Okay. So this is many times in scripture. It talks about the sword. The 
the sword of Babylon, Babylon, the sword of Nebuchadnezzar. We can relate that to what is taking place with the pharmakia. Okay, etching letters. And this is what this is going to etch different letters in the DNA. It's going to recode the DNA of people. Okay, and there's welfare types and free will offerings. So you can, uh, and there's always two basic welfare types in societies throughout history. One is free will offering, so freely giving, paying taxes. The other by force. They often are a key to sealing the fate of society and nations. These clay tiles that became a titulus in the welfare system were not a new thing to the Romans. The tesserae were used as an ancient Roman equivalent to a theater ticket. Okay, so the idea is like a theater ticket is another example. And these were tokens uh, given at certain times by the Roman magistrates to citizens in exchange for which they received a fixed amount of wheat or money. Okay, so this is why the whole system is crashing the economies to force people to receive the wheat and money from the government. Then you will need, this was the origin of the EBT card. Okay, can you see what's going on here, guys? Ancient Jewish tessera. These are examples of them, like seal impressions, okay? Uh, a square tube or die or token, a small tablet. We're using the ancient Romans as a ticket, as a voucher. A means of identification. The A. Cheragma is well attested to have been an imperial seal of the Roman Empire using the official documents. So here's a seal impression. If we look closely, you'll see the eagle in there. Okay, so this is the language that the, the Apostle John is using. Cheragma, they will see a mark on their hands, okay, and on their foreheads. So this goes up all the way to the time of Nero and and the early Christians, because they rejected this, the Christians for the most part were considered Jews. They claimed a king of the Jews, Christ, as their king, and often did contrary to the decrees of Caesar. Okay? So it was actually this system that the Christians were opposite of. Okay? They, they contributed, they held their money together in common so that they were not part of this system. Okay, and that's where the persecution came. Because the system identified your faith. So Christians believed different things, and they could not be benefactors like the Gentiles, who exercise authority over them. The position should be clear that the mark or badge of the beast that proves you must bow down and serve the beast comes in many forms. It will make things difficult so that you can hardly buy or sell in the marketplace if you do not have the badge of service. This is this has happened off and on throughout the age and is happening again. Now, when we go back to Revelation 13, it talks about another beast coming out of the earth who had two horns like a lamb and he spoke as a dragon. He exercised all the power of the first beast before him and he does and he does great wonders. Now, again, if we look at the original language, we find something interesting. And here you see the Strong's Concordance and it's uh, Simeon. Okay, and it means a sign. A token okay now it can be a miracle and a wonder there's no problem with that interpretation but what I want you to think about and consider is it's a sign it's a token so what it may be talking about is actually the mark of the beast it's a sign it's a mark a mark of the beast a token that which a person or thing is distinguished from others and is known Okay, a sign, a portent. So it's quite possible that the second beast, when he does the great wonders, he's implementing the mark of the beast system. Okay, because he does great miracles, he calls fire down. Okay, yes. But when we look at this word, we can also see this great sign. Okay, it may not be a sign to have me, it's a sign of the mark, a sign, a mark, a token. 
And he causes all, small, great, rich, poor, bomb, free, to receive a mark on their right hand and their forehead. So um, you can see in the Roman system, it didn't matter if you were rich or poor. If you were a slave, everybody had to have a tile, a tessera, a identification. Okay? That no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay? So again, when we look at Mark, that is karagma. Okay? Now, the other, the other important word here, is, it says, here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number. Now, if we look at the word count, okay, you can see it's uh, fifizo. Okay, fifizo, and it's used of number of pebbles in numer enumeration or counting. Okay, to count with pebbles, to compute, to calculate, to reckon, to give one's vote by casting a pebble into an urn. That's what we showed you earlier. This is I'm giving you the I'm demonstrating the exact definitions of these words. Okay, to give one's vote by casting a pebble into an urn. That's why we showed you the urn to decide by voting. Now, what you can see here is this word comes from this word, which is Strong's 5586. Okay? And here you see it's fifos. Okay? And this, again, is a pebble sworn by handling to count or ballot, a verdict, acquittal, a small, worn, smooth stone or pebble. In the ancient courts of justice, the accused were condemned by black pebbles and acquitted by white pebbles. This is the word the Lord Jesus used. To he that overcomes, I will grant a white stone with a what? A name written on it. Okay, so a name written on the white stone. It's voting. Okay, and this is the black stone. So the beast counts those that are part of the system with the black stone. So they receive the black stone. This is just like the Day of Atonement. You had two lots. You had the lot of the goat that was to be sacrificed and you have the lot of Azazel that goes into the wilderness, that goes into the lake of fire. So hopefully this is making sense how the mark of the beast is a tessera, a tile. And a fifizo, it's a um, voting stone, okay, as we're showing you. And that's how you count the number of the beast. And it's counting the people for the beast system. So we're telling you about the mark of the beast is the karagma, okay? In a previous video, we talked about how it reflects the character of who you are. Now, we're saying clearly, guys, this is the mark of the beast, this whole um, new world of ID 2020 and all this stuff. We're not going to do all that in the video. Most of you know this. We're telling you to download these videos, the VMAT 2, the God Gene, who knows how long we're going to have this information. But we're saying clearly this is the system implemented through all of this coordinated effort to place the whole world under this system to uh, identify the people. We talked about how it's vaxing spirituality. There will be no candle from the bride, from the bridegroom heard in them anymore. So download these videos as well. We have the number of his name, the cryptocurrency system of buying and selling. And you see the code of W uh, O2020 and then the number 666060606. This is the system. This is here. Okay. This is not far away. Now, in the um, information of the article that we share with you, here are examples of what the tessera look like, okay? So this is a metal one, and here is one with the placard and example with the hand. So this is the word that Apostle John is using to describe the mark of the beast. And this is an example of the uh, commander, okay, with a seal and pressure. Let's remember we are clay, and it talks about iron mixing with clay, okay? These are ancient Jewish tessera, okay, as well that are clay seals, okay? So seals, coins, all right? So coins are money, buying and selling. This is the system that we must 
overcome all these things. So thanks for watching. Please watch the playlist, The Mark of the Beast. There will be a link in the description field for The Mark of these playlist. If these concepts are new to you, we've talked about them before, and it takes a few times to understand them, okay? So we have The Mark of the Beast playlist. We're also talking about this as part of the third angel. The third angel message was to make clear what is The Mark of the Beast. We're trying to make clear to the people what it is. We have to use biblical terms because soon the... Words and things identified through artificial intelligence will eliminate videos uh, very, very soon. So, guys, thanks for watching, and watch and pray you be accounted worthy to escape.